Okay, so you're joining me for your notes on vertical stretches and compressions. Hopefully this goes pretty fast. So the first thing we're going to do is remember that our A value has a couple of jobs. Okay, if your A value is negative, that is what gives us our rocks. Okay, and then the other thing that you might remember from unit five is that our A value is in charge of vertical stretching and vertical compressing, which incidentally is the name of these notes. So what do you think we're gonna do today? Okay, um, the base is what is raised to the power and the base is in charge of growth or decay. And lastly, we have our D at the very end that's being added on. And this drives whether or not we have a shift up or down. Okay, so we've talked about, we've talked about rocks, we've talked about growth and decay, we've talked about shifting up and down. So today we're really talking about stretching and compressing vertically. So the first thing we're going to do is graph this parent function and identify its key characteristics. And then we're gonna compress it and we're gonna stretch it and we're going to compare the characteristics one from another. So hopefully this part is review. We want X and two to the X. So my usual suspects are negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. If I go too fast, pause me. This should be review, so I'm gonna go through it fast. Anything to the zero power is one, two to the first is two, two squared is four. Now I use my flipper powers to flip those powers upside down. Um, sorry, flip those results upside down. So that'll be one over two, one over four. Okay, I have not shifted this. It has a plus zero for the D. So my horizontal asymptote has not shifted. The horizontal asymptote is staying on the X axis. So I've got zero, one, one, two, two, four, okay, negative one, one half, negative two, one fourth. Okay, so this is my beautiful parent that we've graphed a million times. The y-intercept you can see is zero, one. The horizontal asymptote is the x-axis, which has the name y equals zero. This has growth because the base is two, it is multiplying by two every time, that's the common ratio and the base. The domain is all real numbers and the range is y values that are greater than zero. Hopefully that looks familiar to you. If not, you need to go back and watch the other videos. Okay, so now we are going to look at example two. The difference between example two and example one is this little guy right here. My A value is one half. So I'm going to start with my parent, just like we did in our quadratics unit. Okay, my parent is X and two to the X and it's negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. I'm just copying this down. One fourth, one half, one, two, and four. Pause me if you need to. I gotta get out of here. Mr. One is gonna wonder what happened to me. It's late. So what I'm gonna do is take all of these and multiply them by my A value, one half. Half of one fourth is one eighth. Half of a half is one fourth. Half of one is one half. Half of two is one and half of four is two. Now the interesting about this is that even though I chopped all of these in half, I am still multiplying by two every time, which is still my base. Okay, so the base has not changed. I still have a multiplying by two pattern. I've just compressed it. So we're gonna see what that looks like right now. So um, one eighth going, okay, going from two to one to one half, one fourth, one eighth, one sixteenth, 
1 over 32, we're still getting closer and closer and closer to 0. We're getting smaller and smaller and smaller without going negative. So I'm just going to graph these new points. It's a little hard to see. I don't know why I made my graph so small. I think I was trying to fit them all on this page. OK. So now I've graphed those points. And it's kind of hard to see because I didn't do a great job. OK, let me zoom in for this part. Sorry. OK. OK. So this point right here isn't at 0, 1 anymore. My y intercept is at 0, 1 half. We got rid of the 1. It's 0, 1 half. Each of these points is only half as high as the parent was. Okay, so my horizontal asymptote, that didn't move. It's still y equals 0. I still have growth. Okay, my domain is still all real numbers. I didn't change my x's. And my range is still y's that are greater than 0. So a lot of this didn't change. What did change was my y-intercept. Okay, we'll talk more about that later. Okay, so we have to describe the transformations of this function, 1 half of uh, 2 to the x, when compared to our parent. So we didn't have a rocks, we didn't have a shift. All we had was our vertical compression by a factor of 1 half just like we did when we were in quadratic land before Christmas. OK. So looking at these, I'll put my parent points on this one. This one was all the way at 1 instead of 1 half. This one was at 2 instead of 1. This one, instead of being at 2, was at 4. Right? This one, instead of being at Oh, did I mess up? I did. OK, I messed up. This point is supposed to be here, not there. Sorry. I was going too fast. It's supposed to be here. Sorry, guys. OK, the point is it got squished by a factor of 1 half. And it's not going as high as it should have gone. It's only going half as high as the parent. OK. Sorry. OK, so let's look at this one. This time, we're multiplying by 4. So I'm going to start the same way with my little parent table. I've got x, and I've got 2 to the x, so negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2, 1 over 4, 1 over 2, 1, 2, and 4. Now I'm taking all of these outputs and multiplying them by my a value times 4. Four fourths of a pizza is just a whole pizza. Four halves, well, that's two pizzas. Four times one is four. Four times two is eight. Four times four is 16. Notice that even though I am quadrupling my output, my multiplying pattern is still the same. I'm multiplying by two. Okay, it's still my base. So now I'm going to graph these new points, if I can. I've got negative 2 going to 1. I've got negative 1 going to 2. 0 going to 4. Oh my gosh, I cannot read this graph. OK, I've got 1 going to 8. And that's all I can fit on there. I can go backwards a little bit. This next one will be a half and then a quarter. Right, all getting closer and closer to zero without actually getting there. Okay, so my y intercept is not one zero anymore. It is zero, sorry, I said one zero, I meant zero one. It's not zero one anymore, it's zero four. My horizontal asymptote didn't move, it's still y equals zero. I still have growth. 
I still have a domain of all real numbers and my range is still y's are greater than zero. But let's put my parent points on here. My parent points are here. Oh, what did I do? Yeah, okay, I did that right. So this one is four times as high. This one is four times as high. They're all four times as high. It's just easier to see on those. Okay, so when we're looking at the transformations, we didn't have a rocks, we didn't have a shift. All we had was a vertical stretch by a factor of four. Okay, so let's look at all of these together. This is our big brain moment. Okay. Ooh, no. Okay, so this is what I need you to take away from today. When we had the parent only in example one, its A value was one. Our A was 1. Look at the y-intercept. 0, 1. Okay. Look at our A value on example 2. My A value was 1 half. Look at the y-intercept. Oops, I kind of doodled over it. Okay. Look at the A value for example 3. My A was 4. Look at my y-intercept. So we, what we have found here in our A value is another way besides the shift to manipulate our Y intercept, which is kind of exciting. What if we don't have a shift, whatever we make our A value ends up being part of our Y intercept. Okay, let's look at the back. Okay, look at example four. So for function two, we need to find the base. So I'm gonna make a little table of my pretty points. Okay, I go from the horizontal asymptote. This time it happens to be on the x-axis, so it wouldn't have mattered, but we go from the horizontal asymptote. So I got negative one, three. I got zero, one. And from going to 3 to 1, I have to multiply by 1 third. So my R is 1 third, and so is my base. They are the same. So when I look at function 1 and function 2, they both have a base of 1 third. That is my B. So those are the same. Okay, if I put function 1 in the calculator, I equals, what was it, 3 times 1 divided by 3, close parentheses, power caret, x, and then I get my little table. I'm going to copy down this table, and notice the important information here that I have. I have an y-intercept, and I can see that as my x's get bigger, I'm getting closer and closer to zero for my y's. I don't actually get to zero, I just get close. To show you what I mean, I can show you the graph. See, I'm getting closer and closer and closer to zero. It looks like it's touching on the calculator, but it's not. You just gonna have to trust me. We can talk more about it when you come back to class. So, my table that I'm copying down, it went negative two, 27, negative 1, 9, 0, 3, 1, 1, 2, 1 third, and so on. And so those are the points I'm going to graph. We've got negative 2, 27, that doesn't fit. Negative 1, 9, I think that's here. 0, 3, that's here. Uh, 1, 1, 1, 1. 
Uh, two, one third. So it's going like this. Okay. Now we said that it was approaching zero because this also has the same asymptote. It is y equals zero. So they share an asymptote. But if you look at the y-intercepts, the red one is here and the blue one is here. And those are obviously different. Okay, they are both decay. Okay, they both have the same range. It's all real numbers. Whoops, domain, I meant to say domain. And the range for both of these are y values that are bigger than zero. So these are both y greater than zero, they are the same. Okay, let's look at number five. Here, did I leave enough time on that? You can pause it if you want and look at that and like think about it. Okay, now we're going to number five. So when I look at these equations, I can see that I have a parent, I've got a vertical stretch and a shift, I've got just a shift, and I have just a vertical stretch. So we have to figure out which ones are which. So my suggestion would be to start with the shifts because those are really easy to see. Look for where the horizontal, um, sorry, look for where the horizontal asymptote has dropped three units. So this is a shift, this is a shift, this one's a shift, this one's a shift. You see them? Okay, when I look at C, my base is 3. And if my base is 3, then I know that it's growth. Okay, if my base is 1 third, that is decay. Remember that your base is like your R value. They're the same. It's what you multiply by. So if I'm multiplying by 3, I'm growing. If I'm multiplying by a third, Shrinking. So looking at my two shifts, this one is decay, that one is growth, this has to be B, and this has to be C. Okay, now I've got to match up the other ones. Look at this one. This one is growth. And this one is decay with a stretch. Decay with vertical stretch. So here I see decay and there I see growth. Notice there's no shift on those because they're plus zero. The D values are zero. Okay, so just don't forget that for these last ones, in order to get a picture of these, we can put them in the calculator. So I'll put one in here for an example. Oops, that's not what I wanted to do. I already forgot what it was. Gosh, I need to go home. One fourth, okay, plus one, okay. One half, okay, not one fourth. Okay, clear. One divided by two times four power carrot x shoot out of my power plus one okay so that's my transformation and my parent is going to be red so it's four power carrot x so that's my transformation and that's my parent so you can see that i got vertically compressed and that i've shifted up one compared to the parent so the one half gave me a vertical compression by a factor of one half. We have no rocks because the A was positive, but we have a whoops, shift up one unit. Okay, looking at B, I see that I have a negative one for my A value.
it's not stretched or compressed, it's just reflected in the x-axis. So I don't have a stretch or compression, but I do have a rocks. And then I have a shift down two units. Remember that D tells the truth. Okay. Okay, last, my A is negative three. So that A value is doing two things. First, it's stretching it vertically by a factor of three. So I have a vertical stretch by a factor of three. And the second thing is that it's negative, so we have a rocks. And that's all she wrote. Um, email me if you have any questions.